I've seen it before It turns truth into lies oh. But I won't back down I must stay on this road I gotta know what I'm about We're all looking for the moment when We're getting used to not knowing when All the bees are full of light Keep searching for the signs in my dreams back then And I don't know how to stop Cause it brings back the feeling 
Hello and welcome everybody to this special behind the scenes week. Last night we talked about blogging, tonight's all about podcasting. Now I'm really excited to talk about this because podcasting is something that I've done for the last eight years and to be honest with you, I think a lot of people approach podcasting very complicated, like they make it complicated or it becomes complex because I'm not an audio engineer. I don't understand all this audio stuff. How do I do this? How do I record it? How do I host it? How do I do all that? Well, if you've ever wondered that, welcome. Whether you're thinking of starting a podcast in 2021 or you're just here because you're kind of interested, you want to know, this is the right place to be. Now, what are we going to talk about tonight? And before I actually get into that, I want to say hello to a few people. So go ahead and put your first name where you're watching from so I can say hello to you as we're hanging out tonight. Because again, you could be doing a lot of things. Listen, I know if you're a Bachelorette fan, it is on right now. It's getting ready to be on, something like that. So uh, my, my wife and daughter are downstairs, and they're probably going to be half watching me and mostly watching The Bachelorette, but that's okay. But you're here right now, and you're investing in yourself, and I think that's awesome. So go ahead and put your first name, where you're watching from, so I can say hello to you. So let me say hey to Amy, watching from New Zealand. So we got Monica's here. She's got a great question. I'm going to answer that question. we got... If you, as you have questions tonight, go ahead and, and be asking your questions. I will pop them up uh, as well. Uh, this is my wife. She is hosting tonight in the chat, hanging out. And it looks like she's also hanging out both on Facebook and over in the YouTube chat. So she's monitoring both. Uh, Marilla says, so glad you're addressing this. It's one of my ultimate goals after getting my feet wet as a podcast guest. Awesome. Uh, Susan's here watching from Indiana, where I was born and raised. I am a Hoosier who moved south and got wimpy when it gets cold. It's supposed to be 32 degrees tonight here in Florida. What happened? What happened to the Sunshine State? That's what I want to know. Steven's here. He says, hello. Uh, I think this is Charles, if I remember. I'm trying to remember. Uh, if you're in the Facebook group watching this, which is totally fine, but uh, with the software I use, well, actually, it's more Facebook's guidelines. They don't allow the, the name or profile picture to be shared outside of a Facebook group. Maybe because of privacy, I guess. Um, but you have to give permission for that. But hello to Wooster, Ohio. Seems like that's Charles, but I could be wrong. Um, oh, it's Tom Bump. Okay, so uh, Charles is actually in Cincinnati. I believe. So welcome, Tom. Glad that you're here. Beth is here from Youngstown, Ohio. A lot of people from Ohio. Ruth's watching from Florida. Welcome. Steve is here from Fort Worth. And I think he's putting a little slang in there. I like it. Randy's here from Rockford, Michigan. Welcome to Randy. Rob's watching from Halifax, Canada. Meg is here. She said, can't believe it's already 8 p.m. My day flew by. I know what you mean. We got B. Christine in the house. Glad that you're here. And I already see some questions coming in, guys. I will answer your questions. Not ignoring them for sure. Dave J. Jenkins Jr. is hanging out from Dallas, Texas. Uh, of course, Christine was uh, in Alabama. Awesome. Jeff's here from Toledo, Ohio. Ohio's in the house tonight, guys. Ohio is, is outperforming us right now. All right. So as you have some questions tonight, and I already see some of you doing this, what's helpful for me, because on my end, and actually on Thursday night, I'm going to show you my, my live streaming uh, platform, what I'm looking at right now. And I'm even going to give you a tour of the studio. So if you're interested in that and you think, hey, I think one day I'd like to put together, you know, a, a, a budget-friendly but high-quality studio and do some live streaming. And Jonathan, how are you live streaming in six locations? It's a software, and I'm going to show you all how to do that on Thursday night. So stick around, even if you're a little bit interested. It's, it's There's so many tools that we have access to today that can allow us to do this. I'm just in a home in my house, 
and popped in here into this little studio I put together, went live with you guys, and here we are. We're having chat with people all over the world. It's pretty fun. It's pretty amazing. So as you have questions, just put the capital letter Q because it consolidates all the chat from all those locations, and it can be hard to kind of follow along. Sometimes you're having conversations with other people, which is totally fine. Uh, as a high school teacher, I try to discourage kids talking in class, but you know, you're adults, you're allowed to do that. So tonight, we're going to talk about podcasting. I've got my iPad pulled up again because this is what I'm going to be referring to. And so here's what we're going to cover for the next little bit. And I want to keep this at about an hour. So we're going to talk about this big question first. Why podcast? Why should we think about podcasting? Jonathan, why did you get into podcasting when you were blogging and blogging uh, was working for you? Why did you decide to podcast? I'm going to answer that question in just a little bit. I've got my throat coat tea in case you see me going for that. It's warm because it's a cold winter Florida night, but also it's going to help with my voice. By the way, for you speakers out there, and this is actually even good for podcasting right now, before you go like on a guest interview, the last thing you want is for your voice to go out. And so uh, look it up, look it up on Amazon or just at your local grocery store, throat coat tea. Helps to th coat your throat, obviously, and uh, helps your voice from going out, from squeaking or losing your voice. I like to use it a lot, especially when I know I'm going to be teaching or talking for a little bit. Number two, we're going to talk about podcast formats. There's there's lots of different styles of podcast, and maybe you're like, I don't know what to do. What Do I do an interview podcast? Do I do educational? What are my choices? We're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about podcast equipment, software, and hosting for the non-geeky, the non-techies of the world, which is probably all of us. I know when I first got into it, um, just to be a little silly, I remember watching a tutorial in 2012. It was a video and someone had put it together and literally it was like, okay, here's your laptop and you have your microphone over here and you need an audio interface with all these buttons and you have to have an XLR cable here. And oh, sometimes you want to have a separate recording device because you don't want to record on your computer. So it's got to go to this device and you need this sort of cable for that. You need to be able to record here. And then if you're interviewing here, and then if you've got someone on interview for Skype, you've got a Skype, I mean, it looked like a football play, you know, X's and O's, right? It was crazy. Well, we're going to keep it simple tonight. We're going to keep it real simple that literally if you've got a computer and a microphone and free software, you're good to go. And I'm even going to show you how you can get started with a free hosting. How cool is that? So like the only thing you probably have to pay for is a microphone. And I'm even going to show you a budget friendly microphone that works great. That's not going to cost you thousands of dollars. So if you guys are up for this, just say yes in the chat right now. I see we got lots of people on from uh, many different locations that you're, um, that you're watching from. So just tell me yes in the chat so I know you're with me because I'm just talking in a room by myself. And I want to know if you're excited and ready to go. And then, of course, we are also going to answer your Q&As tonight. All right, I see it coming in. Yes, yes, yes. And I see a lots of great questions, and I will get to those questions in just a little bit. So let's talk about why podcasting. Okay, so I want to show you two numbers. The first number is 90 million. The second number is 120%. What do these numbers represent? 90 million represents the number of people in the U.S. 
that listen to podcasts monthly. This is huge. Now, if you're outside of the U.S., podcasting is, yes, definitely a thing, even outside of the United States. But guys, 90 million people. And you know what? There's a lot of people, and I, I found this out when I first started podcasting, that love to listen to podcasts when they're commuting. They're going to work or from work. They're tuning in. They're listening to podcasts. Podcast is something you can put in your ears and literally do something else, right? So that's another reason why I love podcasting is because uh, I listen to podcasts when, you know, I, uh, in fact, I was doing, uh, I was pressure washing the driveway, hanging Christmas lights, and I was listening to podcasts. Um, on my AirPods while I was doing that. You could clean house, you could cut the yard, you could be doing things while listening to a podcast. The other thing that uh, I like about podcasting is it's a very intimate form of communication. If you think about it, um, you're in, your voice is in somebody else's ears. They hear you. And also when you're talking on a podcast, you're talking to single individual people. You're not talking to a crowd, you're talking to one person. It's a very intimate form of communication. And also 120%, what does that represent? This represents the growth over the last four years. Podcasting is still growing. This is the number of listeners, not the number of podcasts. The number of listeners has grown 120% that means it's doubled and some of people who are actually starting to listen to podcasts. So podcasting is great. The last thing I want to say about why podcast is for you bloggers out there, or maybe you've been YouTubing for a while, you've been doing other some form of content. Here's the reality. It's an opportunity for you to repurpose your content and attract a whole new audience. Let me explain. So I started my blog in 2009. I started my first podcast in 2012. By the time I got to 2012, I had a few hundred blog posts that I had created. So when it came time to launch the podcast, I didn't go, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to say? I got to come up with ideas? No. You know what I did? I went back to all my old blog posts and turn them into podcasts. They literally became my sermon notes or my speaker notes. So I had the microphone in front of me. I had my old blog post that still had evergreen truths to it, right? And I simply taught it. I didn't read it like a script. You certainly can if you want to, but I used it as notes for a, as a speaker would and taught on the podcast. It literally allowed me to repurpose content I'd already created and capture a whole new audience. And you want to know something? I have never had one person ever write me and say, Jonathan, why are you giving me the same content on a podcast from the blog? No, nobody's saying that. There's a whole new audience there and people aren't following us as closely as we think. So that is why podcasting. All right, so we can check that off our list. And I see your questions coming in. Thank you guys for being here. And uh, if you're just joining us, we are going through this list. And we can check this off. So let's talk about podcast formats. What are some podcast formats? I really think there are four formats. Now we could argue that there's multiple versions of these four styles, but really I think there's four formats. Number one is interview. Now, let me talk about plus and minuses of, of an interview podcast, starting an interview podcast. So here are some pluses. Pluses are you don't have to create the content. Literally, you are the Oprah who is just asking good questions from interesting people. Now, a benefit of a interview podcast is if the person you interview shares with their audience your episode with them, people might subscribe to your podcast. So it e instantly gives you exposure. The other thing an interview podcast can do 
is an interview podcast can actually um, set you up for opportunities to network with people you might not otherwise be able to. So let's say, for example, you know, think of somebody who's the, a best-selling author in your niche. You're like, man, I wish I could kind of get to know them. Would they give me 15 minutes of their time? Probably not. But if you said, hey, I have a podcast and I'd love to interview you in your latest book on the podcast, then they would say, yes, how do I know that? Because I just published a book. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to get on 100 podcast episodes over the next couple months. So if any of you have a podcast episode, you already got podcast up and running and you want me to come be on your show, reach out to me because I am actively getting out on podcast. I love podcast as a way to create more exposure. So it works both ways. Now, of course, there are some downsides to podcast interviews. You got to keep the, the, um, you got to keep the fill, right? You got to like, if you're going to do a weekly podcast, you've got to stay on track. You've got to work with schedules. People sometimes are there, sometimes they're not. Sometimes their schedule works out last minute. They get on and they don't have a good mic or they're just talking off their phone. Um, you, you have all those kind of issues. Your internet goes down in the middle of an interview. I've had all those things happen. So there are some downsides as well. But interview can be great. If you just love having discussion, go for an interview podcast. Two is a scripted podcast. Now, these have become more popular, I would say, the last couple of years. But um, scripted would be fiction and nonfiction. And it would be, I mean, a simple example that we would know it's either like a monologue where you, uh, someone's obviously reading, but they're putting expression to it, like an audiobook, right? It's like a shortened audiobook. The other thing is um, it could be sometimes dramatized. So like back in the day, and even sometimes you can flip through the radio today, and you'll hear uh, kind of an audio, audio drama kind of scenario, right? Story that's being told on the radio. That's scripted. Number three is like a news recap. Now, this isn't just like current events. It could be uh, industry news in the industry that you're in. It could be um, stock market recaps. It could be anything just related to your specific industry. And number four is educational. Now, you don't have to be exclusively one thing. You can be a hybrid. So I am mostly educational, my podcast. But there are a few times where I'll bring on someone to interview. I've done that before. So it's not like you can't, you have to just choose one and only do one. But hopefully this helps you give an idea. And so I'm curious, tell me in the chat right now, whether you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you're at, I'm, I'm watching your comments Tell me kind of right now, which one of these four is most interesting to you? In fact, if you were going to do one, which one of these would you more likely do? Which one feels more natural? I'm curious. So go ahead and put that in there. All right. So podcast formats is done. Check mark. Let's talk about podcast equipment. So podcast equipment, I'm going to show you on my screen, but I'm also going to show you in my camera view here. Let me show you my very first podcasting microphone. Here it is. It is called a Blue Yeti. I bought this microphone in 2012. You say, how do you know that? Because Amazon told me, I'm going to show you where that is, where this microphone is on Amazon. And this microphone's been good to me. I recorded my first uh, book on this. If you guys have, uh, if you got my very first book, The 15 uh, Success Traits of Pro Bloggers, I recorded the whole audiobook on this microphone. And this was a USB directly into my laptop. That's it. Very simple. So this microphone runs about 120, 130 bucks. But I bought this eight years ago. Now, one downside to this is um, that it's a condenser microphone. And 
Um, let me explain what I mean. Let me actually pull up the iPad. It'll be a little easier to explain this. So we're going to scroll past here. So there's, there's basically, when it comes to mics, there's kind of two things you need to know. Condenser. versus dynamic is the first thing. And the second thing is USB or the new one is USB-C if you have kind of the newer Macs and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like in a second versus XLR. So here's my recommendation, all right? I'm gonna strongly encourage you to stick closer to the dynamic microphone. It's not the end of the world if you choose condenser. Like I said, I've done a podcast for eight years on this. I've ordered a new mic. I was hoping it was going to be here today. I'm going to show you the mic that I just recently purchased from kind of my newer podcast mic. But um, but it's more of a dynamic microphone. So what's the difference? Condenser kind of grabs the sound all over the place where a dynamic microphone kind of really focuses in and captures it coming from one place, right? So if you're wanting to capture, you know, what's going on in the room, condenser. If you want dynamic where it's just kind of very narrow one way that you speak into a microphone, that's more of a dynamic mic. But again, I've done podcasting for eight years. No one's ever said, Jonathan, your audio's terrible. I've done audiobooks on this microphone. This microphone is fine, in my opinion. Okay. Now, the other difference is USB, USB C versus XLR. The simple, this is simple, this is a bit more complex. Now, the reason why is a USB or a USB-C will actually go directly into your laptop. So whatever you're recording on, your laptop is recording your voice. Now, with an XLR, I'll try to show you. Um, I don't know if I can show this to you. There's, you need an audio interface that goes in between, which that's why I don't recommend that you start there. Like I've got this behemoth now that I'm live streaming and I'll show this off. You can see some of the lights in there. Can't, I don't wanna, wanna unplug it. You see, that can be intimidating. That was intimidating for me when I purchased it. I'll show you guys this in a live stream. You don't even need that to live stream, if I'm being honest, okay? That's kind of next level. There's kind of level one, level two, level three. So the point is, I would avoid XLR because you gotta plug it into something other than your computer. And if you're wondering what XLR is, it's this kind of a plug. I don't know if this will pick up on camera, but it won't focus it. Maybe it will, I'm trying to focus on my face. So there you go, see, it's got that kind of end to it, right? So it's, it's obviously not gonna plug into your computer. It's gotta plug into something else, which then plugs into your computer. So you want to stick with a USB. So what I want to do is I want to share with you some of my favorite mics for on a budget. So let me know. Are you interested in that? I'm going to show you right now. Tell me if you're interested. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to show my screen. I've got some of this set up for you guys. All right, so this is what I started with. This is the USB-C. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And like I said, oh, clicking around too much here. Like I said, I purchased it May 1st, 2012 because the Amazon's reminding me. You know, this is when I purchased it. But, you know, this is still a, a good quality mic. So there you go. Now, this is one that I tried to get this earlier this week. I'm really, really excited about this microphone. The only problem is it said back order everywhere, even off Amazon. And then as I was setting this up tonight, I saw three left in stock. So now I know what's gonna happen. You guys are gonna go order these three 
and I'm not going to be able to order one. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but I'm shocked that there's actually some here that will uh, arrive as early as a couple of days because just two days ago, it was like back order till January. It was like, forget that. This is a $99 Rode pod mic that already has a built-in pop filter, so which is awesome. And for only $99, it's also, notice, a dynamic microphone. This is probably the highest quality, cheapest podcasting microphone um, that I know about. Now, I will say, another big fan or favorite with a lot of people is this one. This is the Audio Technica ATR2100. And uh, I will try to, if, I, if I'm able to, I'll try to, to put some of these links maybe in an email tomorrow, those of you on the email list, um, if you're trying to figure out or remember what these are. But this, uh, this Audio Technica uh, is a great one too. Again, these are both comparable prices. This is the one that is coming in Thursday for me that is a little bit more pricey, but it's at $229, but it's a great quality, uh, studio quality microphone at $229. This is the Rode Procaster Dynamic Vocal Microphone. And now this one is going to plug in to an XLR. All right, so that's XLR. I think the Audio Technica can do both. Um, or you can look over here and see it does USB or USB-C. Not sure about the XLR, it probably can because it, it's your, it looks like a typical microphone. Um, this is just, I think, a USB, USB-C connection, which is awesome. So the point is, if I were podcasting today on a budget, this is what I would do. I would buy this Rode pod mic for a hundred bucks plus free shipping. I would hook it into my computer and I would use a free software or Zoom. If you guys are familiar with Zoom and you record yourself in Zoom, that's another great way to do it. You're up and running. I mean, you are up and running. So those are the microphones that I wanted to share. Let's talk about, um, and I see a bunch of questions coming in. We will get to your questions. You guys are doing great. And Tom says, yes, it does both. I think he's referring to the Audio Technica because he has that one. All right. Now, I'm on, if you're, some of you might be wondering this. Is Jonathan, uh, your sound is pretty good right now as it is. Well, you're going to have to come on Thursday night for me to show you that mic. Because it's not in the picture here. It's what's called a shotgun mic. And we're going to actually hook up a second camera on Thursday night for the live streaming. I'm going to give you a tour of how things look from where I am, what the equipment's like, and so on. So, uh, yeah, awesome. All right, so back to our notes. So we've done the podcasting equipment. Check. Let's talk about software and hosting. And then I'm going to jump in and just answer your questions for a little bit. Does that sound good? So let's go back into um, my screen. Because here's where I started. This right here is a free software. It still amazes me that they don't charge at least something for this. It's been free for years. It's called Audacity. So the website is audacityteam.org. It's free. There is no upgrades. There's no trick. There's no five-minute limit. This is a completely free software. Now, while easy to use, you have a little bit of a learning curve depending on your technical expertise. So essentially, without opening it up, I didn't want to get into it too much because then um, it can get really crazy. But you can see here with it showing the interface, basically have a red button that you hit, 
you talk into the microphone, and then you hit the stop button when you're done. And then you can export that file as an MP3 file, which you can then use to upload to any podcast host. So Audacity is a place to start. Another one is Zoom. Zoom is perfectly fine. Even it's, it's great for interviews. I would say most of the interviews that I've done on my book, me, me being the guest, has all happened on Zoom. And I'm talking like big podcast productions. Like uh, I was just on the Zig Ziglar show and they used Zoom to record the podcast for the episode. So Zoom is very, very reliable. If you don't have Zoom, um, you can get free Zoom, I think, which has up to 45 minutes for free and you can record yourself. Or I believe there's even cheaper plans that start at like $7 a month. It means it's very, very affordable. So uh, those are the two that I would recommend. Now you can use other tools out there as well. If any of you uh, are using uh, Camtasia, like video software, you can record your voice in that. Um, there are lots of other options, but those are the two simple ones that I recommend. Okay, let's talk about hosting. So when I first started, I started hosting with Lipson, L-I-B-S-Y-N, and it's still probably one of the most popular ones out there. However, and I haven't looked at it in a few years because I moved away from them. However, I find that Lipson to, is a little bit complex. So when I first started podcasting eight years ago, you had to do something to that file. So once you got the file on your computer, this is the MP3 file on my computer, I then had to have a program to tag the information on that file. So the written information like the show notes, the title of the episode, you had to put the podcast uh, image on that file. You had to do all of that stuff before you uploaded it to Lipson. Then somewhere around a few years ago, I came across um, these guys called Buzz Sprout. And I'm actually going to show you behind the scenes on my podcast on kind of what we do. Now, what's interesting is I, I was uh, speaking at a podcast conference in Orlando and the person right up after me was from Buzzsprout, started talking to him and found out we both live in Jacksonville. So Buzzsprout's actually located in my city in Jacksonville, Florida, and actually been to their headquarters. Beautiful building. They're, just, they're a very creative team, and they have grown like crazy. And it all started because here's the premise. They said, you know, the average church, the average church is about 200, 250 people in the United States. And typically what happens is if a pastor wants his sermon to go onto a podcast, that goes to a secretary. Well, most of the time, in most of these smaller churches, secretaries aren't technically inclined to do the MP3 tagging and all the stuff I just described. So they said, we've got to create a software that's so easy that a small church secretary without technical knowledge can upload the Sunday sermon. And guess what? What they discovered was way many more people wanted that as well. So I'm actually going to show you behind the scenes, if you guys would like for me to, I'm just checking in with you for a minute. Would you like to see kind of behind the scenes and Buzzsprout and how I actually, when I get done recording an episode, what do I do with it? How do I actually host it? And I see a bunch of you, uh, we got other people here that podcast offering some great suggestions. You certainly can look into these suggestions they have. That's just not the things that I've used, um, but they're probably perfectly fine to use as well. All right, Floyd said, bring on the buzz. So he's ready, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a tour of the podcasting. I'm gonna answer some of your questions. Tonight, uh, I see a bunch of questions coming in, so I definitely do want to answer your questions. So let's jump back in to the screen. Let me pull this into view. And so here's Buzzsprout. Now, the cool thing about Buzzsprout is you can actually get started for free. Now, here's the thing. You need to have a podcast host. 
So if you say, well, Jonathan, I want my podcast to go on Apple iTunes, which now is called Apple Podcast. I want my podcast on iTunes. Well, you don't just put it on iTunes. You have to host it somewhere and then share what's called an RSS link to the different hosting, uh, the different providers out there. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to blow you away here in a minute, okay? Seriously, I think this will blow you away when I show you something that Buzzsprout can do, which I think is pretty innovative. All right, you can actually get started for free. I think you can do like two hours a month. Um, but even now, I think I pay 12 or less than 20 bucks a month to host my weekly podcast. So it's really, really affordable. So buzzsprout.com is what I love. Let's log in. I've got two podcasts. One I don't record anymore, but I'm going to log into this Market Your Message podcast. Now, notice, and I'm not going to go through a whole tutorial here, but I just want to show you this. Upload a new episode. This is where you upload your file. Now, I, for right now, I'm going to skip this. Here's the beautiful thing about Buzzsprout that no other podcast host does. Buzzsprout will accept any file. It could be a video file. It can be an MP3. It can be some other audio file. It does not matter. They will convert it to an MP3 for your podcast hosts. That's really, really cool. I'm going to hit skip now just so you can see a little bit of the interface. Now, this is what you used to have to try to do on the file itself. How easy is this? Could you guys do this? Sure you could. Here's your title. Here's your show notes. It's just like typing in an email. Very, very simple. Now, I've already added my podcast logo, so it's showing that here. You can fill out these details. you got more options, but you don't have to. And then you schedule your episode, and boom, there it goes. Now, when you first start doing a podcast, you've got to also, and this is what I would recommend, that you do four or five episodes, put them into Buzzsprout, and then launch them out to the directories. Okay? So I want to show you this because this is, this, is this is what kind of blew me away. See the directories right here? These directories are all the places where you can submit literally through Buzzsprout. They will walk you through everything. They will walk you through how to actually uh, do this, where you can get listed on all these locations. Now, my software is telling me I'm offline right now. Are you guys still with me? Could you let me know? I don't know why it says that I am offline. Oh, maybe it was just a glitch on my side over here. Okay. You guys could let me know if I'm coming through okay. Hopefully I'm not freezing or anything. Am I good? Okay. There's a little bit of delay between me and what you guys hear. Okay. So check this out. And I, I am listed in a lot of these places. So I'm already in Apple Podcast. I was before I got to Buzzsprout. But you can be on Spotify. You can be on Google Podcast. You can submit to Amazon Music. Guys, this is all for free. You can put it on Stitcher, on iHeartRadio, Pandora. I mean, I'm not even going to read all these. You see them all here. You can get listed and have your podcast go to all these places. This is Awesome. In fact, even these extra apps down here. So once you walk through a few steps, Buzzsprout walks you through everything. This can be all over the place when your podcast goes live. You've got podcast uh, stats that you can look at. There's a lot of other things, players and all that. Let me just go to episodes real quick and show you something cool. So I'm going to scroll down to kind of an older one, show you how to do this. So let me jump into one. So you can actually design your own little player here, which is really cool. Uh, you can embed that player. So uh, I can come over here and say, I want to embed this episode. So I click on this. This is what it looks like, or I can customize the look and feel of it. And I can use this, and I can go put this in a blog post. So literally, my podcast can be embedded on my blog, which is really cool, right? 
All right, there's lots of other things. You can share these episodes right directly from this, uh, from Buzzsprout. But this thing is cool right here. I wanna show you this. Create a visual soundbite. Now I think this is really cool. So what I can do is I can push play on this. I can jump ahead. I want to help people. And then let's say I do a preview. We're doing a 30 second preview. Get rid of debt and save for the future. Now let's say, oh, I really like this. Now watch this, sounds good, continue. Check it out, people. You, Buzzsprout, will create a 30 second snippet of your podcast episode. So you can go share it out on social media. If you go over to my Instagram and scroll back, you can find some of these. Uh, go, go look me up on Instagram, it's just my name, Jonathan Milligan. Um, you can also check this out. You can do the artwork form and I can move this down and now see this wave link. It will expand and make somebody want to click on it to hear it. Have you seen these? Have you been on social media? It's really, really cool. Now I can go landscape if I want, which is better for YouTube. So if you want to turn like right here, if you want to just upload this to YouTube, because I just want to put it out. I want to put my podcast on YouTube. Boom. There you go. Or if you want to do like a Instagram story, there you go as well. So I think that's just really, really cool. And I wanted to share that with you. Um, it also creates a website. You don't have to use it, but if you wanted to check it out, this is my website. I don't even have to pay for hosting. This is my market your message podcast. There it is. Buzzsprout sets all that up allows me to have this for free. Really, 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 really cool. So the question is, can you guys do this? Yes, you can. You can absolutely do this. Podcasting just might be the thing that is going to take you to the next level in 2021. So here's the thing. I want to invite you to be a part of a training where I'm going to walk our students through how to set up and start and launch a podcast in 2021. So here's what we're doing. I have this membership called Fast Track Lab. In fact, I've got Fast Track Lab members here right now. Guys, let people know in the chat that you're a fast tracker, that you are part of Fast Track Lab. It's a private membership that we open up a few times a year. And here's the cool thing. So don't go anywhere because this is really cool. We are inviting you, we're gonna have it open, open enrollment until Friday night. Friday night, Fast Track Labs open. Now, what's Fast Track Lab? Here's the easiest way to explain it. It's like Netflix for bloggers, podcasters, YouTubers, and live streamers. There are over 217 classes about every topic you can imagine. Whether you wanna write, teach, speak, coach, do Kindle books, blog, podcast, YouTube. There are training videos in there. And we've set up a special link just for you guys that are here live. You can't find this on the website at jmill.biz slash lab. This is just a short URL. It's, it's my name kind of shrunk, jmill.biz slash lab. If you go there right now, here's the cool thing. Over the next couple months, inside Fast Track Lab, which is a private membership where I do live classes every single month with the members, this is what we're going to cover. In December, this month, we're going to do a How to Start a Blog Masterclass. So anybody who wants to launch a blog, you finally are ready to launch the blog. You don't know what to write, how to do it. How do I write a weekly blog post? That is your class. In January, we're going to do how to start a podcast masterclass, where I'm gonna show you with Buzzsprout how I would launch a new podcast step-by-step step to get into the new and noteworthy. In February, we're gonna do how to start a YouTube channel masterclass, where you're gonna learn how to launch a YouTube channel if you want to or when you're ready to, and how to start a live stream show masterclass is going to be in March. So over the next couple months, we're gonna cover the four major ways to market your message all inside of Lab. Now, here's the cool part. 
we're actually offering some pretty phenomenal bonuses if you decide to join the lab with us before Friday night. Bonus number one is the Discover Your Message Challenge. This is a 14-day challenge that we help you find your purpose, your people, and your passion. If you don't know your audience or your niche yet, this challenge will nail that down for you. Bonus number two is the Launch Your Platform Challenge. Once you discover your message, you gotta launch your platform. How do I actually set up my website, Jonathan? How do I actually connect my domain name or choose a domain name? How do I use WordPress or Kajabi to set up my website? That's what the Launch Your Platform Challenge does for you. Bonus number three, you get to stream over 217 classes, just like Netflix, but it's for bloggers, speakers, writers, coaches, video bloggers, podcasters. So why not consume content that's gonna help you meet your goals? Binge watch that, is what I say. And finally, and we threw this in the last minute, and I love this, bonus number four is a free ticket to Your Message Matters Live. We're having, uh, right now, we're hoping to do it in person, two day event in Jekyll Island, Georgia in June but we are more than likely gonna offer a virtual option for people who can't travel, or if we have to go 100% virtual. Either way, we're gonna charge around 300 bucks for you to um, be able to attend that two-day workshop, and some of you attended Your Message Matters Live uh, last year. So you know the value that this is. We're gonna reserve a free ticket for you for that, just for joining tonight. So here's the breakdown. The breakdown is, you're gonna get live monthly classes with me every single month. You are going to get a live office hours call where all I do the whole time is answer your questions. So you can bring your questions to me each month. You're gonna stream over 215 plus classes. You're gonna be able to get these bonuses, discover your message, launch your platform, and a free ticket to Your Message Matters Live. And here's the crazy part. It's all for just $30 a month and you can cancel at any time. There's no contract. You're not locked into a 12 month payment. Listen, $30 gives you all of this. I'm assuming all the risk because I'm giving you guys all of this stuff, but I want you to get in there because I know once you get in there, you're gonna start getting the answers you need. You're gonna finally make some progress and stop spinning your wheels. You're going to stop Googling stuff and start leaning into our community of awesome uh, content creators or just get me as a mentor with the live office hours calls. Now, here's one more thing that I think it's important for you to know. I've been running Fast Track Lab for about six years now. And up in when I launched it, I launched it around the $30 mark. And I've never, never raised the prices. But we've added so much value inside of Lab. Next year, the new price is gonna be $47 a month. But for anybody who gets in this week or for you current Fast Track Lab members, your price will never go up. You will always be at that $30 a month. And so, uh, yeah, you've got the best deal. So there you go. This is the opportunity for you to jump in $30 a month before the price goes up to 47. You get all of these extra bonuses as a thank you for joining this week. And I can't wait to actually walk you through step by step how to start a podcast. Listen, tonight was a kind of about the overview of podcasting, but we're going to go step by step to help you launch that podcast or blog or YouTube channel or live stream. All right, I'm gonna answer some questions. So I'm gonna scroll back here. As you have questions, I'm gonna hang out for the next few minutes, answer as many questions as I can. And it could be about lab, it could be about podcasting, just put the capital letter Q so I see your questions coming in, if you would. All right, so Monica says, um, so she had a question right from the beginning. When people say lifestyle blog, vlog, does that mean do lifestyle and then have a theme? 
certain types of lifestyle. Also, can uh, you put your products showing the label in your blog and video for YouTube? Okay, so there's a couple questions in there. Here's the thing, the, the lifestyle thing is very confusing. Um, one of the ways people have looked at lifestyle blogging originally was I can work anywhere I want. It supports my lifestyle. I can travel, I can just work from home. It, cre it allows me to work in the mornings or the evenings or the weekends or just work for four hours. So that was originally the idea behind lifestyle. Then as YouTube started maturing, this really this concept of kind of a lifestyle vlog was following kind of the reality show atmosphere where people began to get really, really popular on YouTube because people wanted to know, they wanted to follow um, the life of certain individuals or couples or couples who got married or couples who have babies or just kind of do life with them via YouTube. Now, that is a thing, but here's the thing. That's very, very hard. I'll be honest with you. It's super hard to try to become a celebrity. It's much easier to pick a topic you know or are passionate about and just start serving people, helping people, giving good content, or bringing experts like interviews on a podcast and introducing them to amazing people. The Oprah effect, right? I mean, how is Oprah a star? I mean, really? All she did was kind of introduce you to really, really cool people. And in the process, she became associated with them and became a star. So I hope that answers your question. I'm not sure about the, uh, the product showing the label in your blog and video, whether the, the rights are there or if it's okay to do it. I really don't know the answer to that. All right, let's see if we can get some other questions here. And by the way, as you guys are joining Lab, if you decide to enroll in Lab, let me know in the chat so we can welcome you to our community. I saw we have people who've already joined this week. And uh, we're so glad that you are inside of Lab. Okay, Megs asked earlier, best way to host a podcast on a website? Yeah, I used to wonder that too, Megs. When I first started, um, I was like, well, maybe I should go to the media in my WordPress and just upload the audio there. Why not just, I'm already paying for hosting, why not do it there? But here's the thing. Audio files can be memory hogs and it can slow down your site to try to host a bunch of audio files on your own WordPress. That's why you need a separate place. And like I said, I think Buzzsprout's 12 bucks a month. It's not very expensive at all. All right, let's see what other questions we got here. Um, I see a question from Rob, yeah, I see a question from Rob here on what is the whiteboard that you're doing? How does it work? Very cool. So Rob, come back on Thursday because I'm gonna show you my live stream setup, but to kind of just show you right now, it's an iPad. It's an iPad hooked to my computer and the app is Nobility. It cost me about eight bucks and I've got an Apple Pencil, and the software I'm using, which I will show you, I'll actually show you the screen and what I'm using Thursday night. So come back Thursday night at eight o'clock for the live stream setup. All right. Okay, again, some of you asking about the link. The link is right here, jmill.biz slash lab. So let's answer some more questions. All right, here's a question. How would you handle a podcast interview when the person you were talking with was not actually in your studio? Yeah, so maybe this answered your question, but I would use Zoom. So in Zoom, you bring them on, you hit record, and you just ask the questions. And here's the cool part about Zoom. Once you're done with Zoom, Zoom gives you, it actually downloads on your desktop, both a video file and an audio file. So the audio file itself becomes the podcast. So that's how that works, and that's why Zoom is what most people use. 
All right. So you, some of you putting in the types of formats, podcast formats you would do. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Meg says, will you be able to record your new audiobook with the Rode Procaster? I could if I was doing a self-published book, but um, this latest book was through a publisher. And so they have me going to a studio. So I've had a lot of people ask me, Jonathan, is your message matters going to be an audiobook? The answer is yes. COVID has delayed that, but we are negotiating the contract. I'm actually going to go, I'm actually going to go down to Orlando to a professional studio and probably take about four days and they think about eight hours of audio. So you guys that bought your message matters book, you know, it's a pretty thick book. Um, there's a lot in there, but we're going to be doing that in a professional studio because that's what the publisher would like to do. But you know what? If you're doing a self-published book or you're thinking about doing your own book in 2021, I highly encourage you, just use whatever mic you have and do your own audiobook. You can absolutely do that. All right. See, lots of you guys sharing great information. Meg's got all kind of great questions tonight. She says, with podcasting with two folks in the same room, which mic, in your opinion, would be the better option? Um, you know, I've done two people in a room with the Blue Yeti. It's worked fine. Uh, it is more of a condenser mic, so maybe that's why it's worked fine. But I think if you can, and you might want to just listen to audio, if you both can just get in the proximity, you know, uh, I think it would be fine. All right. Scrolling through so many good conversations here. Lots of chat coming in from all over. Trying to answer as many questions as I can. Tom, what have you found is the optimal length of podcast? And how many per month? This is a great question, Tom. So it really depends. Got to go back to the format option. Um, the thing that I, this is me personally. Everybody's different. So honestly, it kind of goes back to your, your listener, right? That avatar, the people you want to reach, what would they prefer? What do they want? That's so very important. Uh, and the reason I say that is because uh, um, I had a second podcast for I did for a couple years called Simple Life Habits. In fact, you can still go listen to it. Here's what's crazy. Every week I get like an update because it's in Buzzsprout. I have not recorded a podcast on, on Simple Life Habits in five years, four years maybe, four or five years. Every week <laughs> I get a report that's like, Jonathan, you had 2,000 listens on this episode, 1,000 listens on that. I'm like, should I be doing that podcast again? Uh, and the reason I stopped is because I was really trying to focus my attention. And I didn't want to keep up with multiple podcasts. You certainly can if you want to. But the point, the reason I'm bringing that up is because I found the optimal time for that podcast was 10 to 15 minutes. And here's why. I would get uh, listener feedback, people writing in saying that they listened on their commute, that they found that listen to, you know, productivity tips or encouragement. Um, on the way to work or home was like the perfect thing that they wanted. So I, I really tried to keep those episodes around 15 minutes. Uh, my Market Your Message podcast, I still do the same. I try to keep it around 10 to 20 minutes at the most. Sometimes I go 30, very rarely. Uh, interviews, they can be 30 minutes on the short end, an hour on the long end. So it just really depends. Uh, I know for me, I don't like, and this is a pet peeve of mine, I don't like podcasts. And this is especially true if you've got like two hosts on a podcast where they banter for 20 minutes before they actually get to the thing that the title said was going to be about the podcast. I'm just not a fan of that. That's just me. I want to like get to the point. So I like to just like get to the point with my podcast. 
but that's me. Uh, B. Christine brings this up. Epidemic Sounds is a great source for podcast music if anyone's looking. And you stole my thunder, Christine, because I wanted to talk about that on live streaming night. Because if you guys heard a little bit of the music before, and I could play some of the music now if I turned it on, uh, I went with an 80s theme for my live stream show. So, by the way, if you guys are enjoying this, Wednesdays at 1 o'clock Eastern, you need to, to join us. Every Wednesday, I do a live stream show called Market Your Message. And in fact, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern, we're doing another episode. And you can find us in these same places. So you can subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're there. Or like one of the pages that you're watching us over on Facebook. And uh, we'll be live tomorrow at 1 o'clock for a brand new episode. But uh, yes, Epidemic Sounds. Uh, I think I pay 15 a month. But here's the cool thing. You have access to all their music. And you have rights to use their music podcast, on YouTube, you don't pay for them. Now, it's amazing because before that, I was buying tracks. I remember when I wanted to have music tracks playing softly while I did my podcast on Simple Life Habits, I paid 10 or 15 or $20 for one music track. And this you get to play, you get to download and play unlimited songs, $15 a month. It's a pretty good deal. All right. Do you need a website or blog if you're starting a podcast? Um, you know, I recommend as a platform builder that you do get a website. Do you need that to get started with podcasting? No. I mean, one could truly just get started with pod with a Buzzsprout because it has a built-in podcasting um website to it where you can just reference people to go there. But ultimately, you're going to want to build a list. Uh, you're going to want to have a home base online. That's your place. But can you get started just right away with but just using Buzzsprout and a podcasting microphone? Yes, you can. You really can. Uh, opinion on using Anchor. I have used Anchor a little bit. It's a very it's an app on your phone where you can actually record podcast on your phone. Now there are some really good mics today that you can actually hook into your I mean really good quality mics that you can hook into your um, phone and use Anchor. So you guys can check that out. I've just not personally done that, but you definitely could check that out. Kathy said, "Drink your throat coat tea for your audiobook." I know eight hours of recording. And the worst is if you mess up halfway through a chapter, right? <laughs> I tried to hire James Earl Jones, but, uh, and Morgan Freeman, he wasn't available either. So you guys get me instead. Sorry. Uh, is there a replay on this? I missed the first half. Yes. So on YouTube and over on Facebook, we're going to leave these up till Friday. Then we're going to take them down. But uh, all these replays, all four nights will be available for a limited time. Uh, Diane, where do you edit? Yeah, we didn't really get into that because I didn't want to get too technical. But one place you can edit is in that Audacity software. So if you feel like you just want to like cut out uh, a little, maybe you had an um or the doorbell rang because Amazon's at your front door and you want to just edit that out, you can actually do that in Audacity. Uh, it's actually not to, you just kind of highlight the section and you just hit the back button on your computer or on your keyboard and then you shrink them together so there's some simple editing you can do with audacity okay okay i think that's all i see all the questions so once again if you've joined lab tonight welcome if uh, you haven't yet joined, honestly, this is the best time to join this week because of all the bonuses we're offering in the lower price point. 
for just $30 and you can cancel anytime. So if you get in there for a month, and like Jonathan, this isn't meeting my needs, no hard feelings, just reply to any of our emails and say, I'd like to cancel my subscription. That's fine. I know that uh, if people get in there, they're gonna get value from it. And if you're not using it, you're not getting value from it. I totally understand, no hard feelings. But I want you to try this. This is why we're giving so many bonuses, a $200 course and a $300 course. And oh, here's a little secret that I haven't announced yet, but we just decided today for you WordPress users, we are adding an entire WordPress tutorial videos in the bonus section. Over 23 tutorial videos on how to use WordPress. We've partnered with WP101 and they keep WordPress tutorials up to date. And they just sent us over 23 WordPress tutorials on the latest update of WordPress. And it has everything. If you wanna know how to do a blog post, how to do a page, how to add an image, how to create links, how to do menus. If you're a WordPress user, here's the thing. If you go to WP 101, it'll cost you about $300 a year to get access to their tutorials. It's free for lab members because we are absorbing the cost and we're passing it on to our members. So WordPress users, that's something to look forward to as well. All right, everybody, thank you again. Don't forget jmill.biz slash lab. Oh, and I forgot, takeaways. We always do takeaways. So just like you put a capital letter Q, I want you to put a capital letter T. Tell me your single biggest takeaway from hanging out tonight. I wanna read them off really, really quick. What is your takeaways? What are they? What's your single biggest takeaway? Maybe it was Buzzsprout, Jonathan. Seeing Buzzsprout sold me. Or Jonathan, I want to get that Blue Yeti microphone. Or I now I know how easy it is to get going with a podcast. I think I can do this. Or maybe it was the directories that I showed you. And like, wow, I can be listed on all those places where people can find me. So tell me your takeaways. I'm gonna pop them on the screen real quick. So Sean's takeaway, consider using Audacity or Zoom for recording audio for podcasts, yes. Steven's takeaway was Buzzsprout. Awesome, Diane was Zoom. That's right, you can definitely use Zoom. Uh, B. Christine says Buzzsprout was a game changer for me, awesome. Jeff liked Buzzsprout and the simplicity of it as well. Love it. Kathy says, gonna move our, move our embryonic podcast over to Buzzsprout and just bought a new mic. Yes, Kathy, I love it. And the Buzzsprout people are amazing. I've gotten to know them personally. And uh, so their customer support is off the chain. Awesome. All right, guys, I think that's all that I see tonight. So again, you can join me tomorrow at one o'clock Eastern for the Market Your Message show. If you've never participated in that, come hang out with us. We're gonna be, of course, on YouTube and on Facebook as well, one o'clock tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, eight o'clock, YouTube channel. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you how I am putting together my YouTube channel how I'm optimizing my YouTube videos to get views, and some of the stuff that I'm doing with the YouTube channel. I think it'd be a lot of fun. If you're interested in video, we're gonna do that. And then finally, Thursday night, live stream. We're gonna have a second camera. We're gonna show you behind the scenes everything we're doing here. You guys can absolutely do this. I'm doing this in my home. I'm, I don't have a professional studio background. I'm not a technical person you can absolutely do a live stream show. So with that, we're gonna say good night. Thank you for being here. We'll catch you all very, very soon. And if you wanna binge watch some of our past episodes, uh, I'm gonna put up a screen right now that will tell you more about our live stream show. So see you guys, have a great night. Here you go.